The first thing that's really interesting is that the, the green building principles that you apply in big corporate buildings or very fancy golf courses, state houses, where we think it's, a, it's a, an application for the rich or an application for the corporate sector, are exactly the same principles as you apply locally in informal housing or formal housing of this nature. So the difference is that and the one, uh, other than the obvious economic difference uh, in terms of the status of your occupant, the big difference in it is that while it's there, it's a nice to have, here it becomes an absolute necessity. So when you're saving 20 or 30 percent of your income, and your income is a thousand rand, equivalent of $120 a month, that's a huge amount of money. And from a poverty alleviation perspective, from the health perspective, the health burden that you're suffering as a result of an inefficient building is. Yeah, it's life or death. It's kind of it's it's, it's the, 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 the the nuts and bolts of your life rather than the nice to have of your life. I'm staying with my kids. Yeah. And I was spending a lot. I was spending a lot for the electricity. Yeah. And I couldn't even even buy electricity for 250. Only to find that I couldn't make it for even a month because it was I was just running out of budget. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I've got this. Uh, it's still important. It's nice and cool because my house is hot. So we've built, we have built three million houses in South Africa of this nature in the last 15 years. And each one of those occupants in those houses, at least 90% of them, have been subjected to this kind of additional poverty, this uh, exacerbation of energy poverty, uh, exacerbation of their health uh, compromise. And those three million houses, we will construct another three million in the next 15 years. So the big question is kind of, how do we avoid what we would have to do in terms of retrofitting a big chunk of houses? Sorry, sis. Uh, how, how, are we going to, how are we going to avoid having to retrofit houses in 15 years' time? Because the retrofitting is that much tougher. So we've got to get in on the act when we're building houses, but it's cheaper, a whole bunch more efficient. The carbon that we save on those houses is significant. It provides some aspect of the finance. There's obviously a whole bunch of additional finance that's necessary. But at a micro level within the household, it's a complete no-brainer. There isn't a single one of these houses holders that wouldn't say, I'll pay you 200 Rand a month for these interventions, because they're saving that and more. The question is, how are you going to have an institutional mechanism by which you can collect that revenue and government essentially is saving the money on new built power capacity which have avoided capacity in the future and uh, on health and other uh, social ills that they essentially really been causing through this housing. How's the government going to come to the party and help finance that and how's the international finance community going to come to the party particularly around the climate change community because this is a serious mitigation opportunity. It's probably South Africa and most of Africa's lowest hanging fruit in terms of mitigation around energy and massive, massive social upliftment and poverty alleviation. What's going on here? Why is it so noisy? We're having a party! <laughs> a party. <laughs>